Oh, back to the to the left, dude, okay? There's actually an update on this, and I was correct in reading what I did. So here's what happened. Murder suspect Samuel Haskell kept a collection of samurai swords, crossbows, and guns inside, right? The home he shared with the missing wife, in-laws, and young kids it is revealed he directed disturbing videos of men fighting with axes. Okay, these sons are going to be totally off, okay? They, they need... I want to say something. These kids need to be massively evaluated and taken care of because there's already some indications of something not right here with you, you're going to see it. And this is so scary. This is what I'm talking about. The sooner you get it, one of them is 12 already. Okay. Samuel Haskell was ar arrested on Wednesday on suspicion of murder after a dismembered female torso was found. Okay. All those things. Okay. He directed disturbing videos showing men fighting, sword fighting, and posted them under the Instagram uh, name Tragic Streets. Um, it, just because you see that with somebody, it wasn't a, it wasn't an automatic indicator when I was looking through it because I was like, I don't know if other people are writing that with him or because he was part of some other, you know, film stuff, and I don't know if people were paying him to make a movie with that. You know, it was kind of like that thing. But here's the real deal with this thing. Okay, so murder suspect Samuel had an unusual preoccupation with weapons and he kept a large collection inside the single home he shared with his missing wife and children. And he had an obsession with weapons, neighbor L. Benemy told Daily Mail, and he had a samurai sword and a crossbow. He did martial arts and I think he was a black belt and he would go to Japan to do martial arts. Now, that alone, like, if I seen that, it wouldn't have completely, it's not the main indicator, because when I grew up, we had uh, martial arts and everything. We did Taekwondo, and I was close to a black belt there, and that was, you know, everybody's supposed to know self-defense, that bullshit, right? And then I had this love of, like, swords of the whole, like, I don't know, I used to like all that medieval, I don't know, but it was more for, um showing uh more for like you know on the wall type of thing but then i was also thinking that maybe i can flip swords and do some stage show you know put it on a stage show like for entertainment um but not for like killing people with or n nothing like that right so i guess the, the indicators would be like what you're into with it like him being into like stabbing people or something you know what i mean so i was never into that it was a different mentality to it <sighs> and you're not supposed to use martial arts unless it's like self-defense type of thing. But anyway, like that. But Benemy said House School 35 had guns in the house and he had guns. Okay. Yeah, because they said deadly weapon. I was like thinking guns right off the bat. And then I was like, well, it could also include swords, but he has both. Okay. And he explained that she wouldn't allow her kids to go inside their home despite her close friendship with his missing wife. Okay. That's interesting to know. And he's being held on a $2 million thing. And so far, he hasn't been let out, thankfully. Yeah, so they have this thing with the movie thing. Uh, his fascination with weapons was further revealed when they discovered a music video he had directed and posted on his Instagram page. Yeah, that's what I didn't know. It said a music video. And I was like, well, did somebody pay him for it? You know what I mean? Like, it was a harder thing to go by versus his private, his other account and some of the other stuff right so you see this type of thing look yeah i don't trust none of these guys anymore <laughs> i was like so the kids could play here at my house or usually in front in the front lawn right i was okay with the kids playing in their front lawn uh she feared that something could accidentally happen with so many weapons in the house as you should be right good parent haskell's son son now here's a problem right here the sons even brag, quote unquote, brag to the other neighborhood kids that they had weapons in the house, something their dotting mother was not fond of, and could have very well have been going, have been an ongoing source of contention between the couple. Yeah, because he probably kept using it as a threat, and was, you know. But why is the sons bragging? See, there's something wrong with the sons right now. I don't know. One of the house school's sons. So I don't know if it's both of them, the older ones, the eight and the 12. Maybe it's like the eight and the 12 year old. Cause I don't know if the six year old would be doing that, but who knows? These kids are not going to be okay. Okay. 
they you, they need to sit with these kids like that crap like this right here nobody should be bragging my dad has all these weapons like to all of the kids that's crazy normalized so dad's a socio it's normalized oh god and he has three sons you guys this is this is the this is the cycle this is it right here what i say that would i say that they seem very like a happy couple no but i definitely didn't expect anything like this i never could have imagined what happened you will now because it's reminding me of the other case where i was like that guy like it was that thing where i was like that guy's totally off kilter and um when the story came out that he did what he did i was like oh i'm totally not surprised but my brain i wasn't sitting there thinking oh he's gonna turn around and mur murder everybody but um if i see it today yes definitely because i've gone through so many and now now i know what the things are but you will now now it should be alarming right if, if you see somebody's kids running around with you know, bragging about weapons in the house and they don't look happy and the guy's off. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, what could you have done? I guess here in this portion, because of the weapon thing, the couple could have actually contacted CPS because she could claim that maybe the kids, like some knowledge of the kids near weapons and there's guns and this and they started saying things to the other kids yeah they could have possibly uh used that depending on i guess how they word that or whatever any sort of thing like that and reported it to cps and then cps could have came by and this is hindsight so this is for future cases if somebody runs across this that maybe they would have came in and they would have said you have to keep that out of the you know things of kids they're too young they're under they're not even teenagers yet you guys um that they should even you know be if they know where they are have they touched them have those questions um it could have warded off uh some of it at least it would have had an indication and maybe they would have found out that he's abusive and maybe we could have tackled it in that angle right like the public generally right so um yeah that one's crazy um benemy revealed that she and another friend of me whose identity has been withheld were questioned by detectives after haskell was arrested on wednesday morning and were told the disturbing news about that body parts and blood had been discovered inside the house okay i knew i read that i was like uh, I read it and then all of a sudden it disappeared and then yes, I did read it. There were body parts inside the house. And it says, I was interviewed by several homicide detectives and they asked me questions about me, what I knew about her family. And when was the last time I saw her about the boys and the husband? And we were the first two people that they told that they did find body, oh wait, parts of a body inside the house said the mother of four when they broke the news to us it was completely surreal now it might have been the other parts of her that were left because as you see he took off and he dumped things but it could still be some of the fa like it's a weird thing um high school fascination with weapons was further revealed when daily mail discovered the music video the video shows men attacking each other with huge axes and swords, you know, just like that uh, military guy that was making axes and things like that for the military buddies while he beat up two women. Yeah. Have they answered that yet and why he wasn't furtherly, you know, the, the whole thing that they let him take off and I had to get a restraining order and then he's off selling that online? One video showed a man pointing a long sword at another man's neck. <laughs> another video showed a man holding a weapon with creepy music in the background while a man wearing a red beret can be seen swinging his sword around. A machine gun can be seen in yet another video glamorizing the weapon with hypnotic music playing in the background. Oh yeah, this is the guy. The Haskells moved into the quiet, family-oriented community of Tarzana about 25 miles north in December 2020. Yeah, I actually found all that information out. So prior to that, um, I don't know what happened there, but yeah, they had just moved there, you guys, just during the COVID time, just for a couple years. They weren't even there that long. And so Google doesn't have a lot of 
things on the last time they went by there was like 2019 or something so everything prior to that is somebody else and it says our kids are similar ages and we spent a lot of time together especially during covid and we took daily walks right so she said you couldn't ask for a better neighbor she was an amazing mom and an amazing person and an amazing daughter to her parents despite spending much time together she never expressed um, any concern about her husband as they typically wouldn't, right? It's like, why am I gonna get you involved in his garbage? Uh, ben and me now believes she was trying to protect her by not getting her involved with the, their marital problems, right? That's kind of, that's a very common thing. So Ben and me said she never had a conversation with Haskell in all the years they lived right next door. I was not close with him. It was like a hi waving to each other and he didn't make eye contact and he would take a lot of walks in the neighborhood, usually on his own, right? Which we saw on the videos. He's a loner, even when he's married. Like not even with his kids, you guys, it's the craziest thing. Like you'd want to be like, here's my kids, we're skiing. You know, it's all him. It's like, look, we're out eating. Look at my kid. You know what I mean? You would be so happy. He doesn't like anything. And it's all while many neighbors question Haskell's odd behavior, ben -Me believes he could have had Asperger's syndrome, which could explain his off-putting antics, especially at the many parties his uh, wife so meticulously put together. Well, that would be only the addition. That's, I, we need to not like promote like Asperger's syndrome would cause somebody to go murder a family. So like I said, I had a perpetrator who had that, but he was also a sociopath and he wanted to murder people and he was a big stalker so that's why i've mentioned the at the autism thing in the mix of some of these guys they don't all seem to have that but all it is is like an addition to him being a socio because not all people with autism are sociopaths okay that's why i want to make that clear because i've met a lot of people that they are autistic and they are not sociopaths. It would have something to do with their home life. So we looked at the dad and the dad has some issues with women and he got sued. So it's those things. The addition to the Ashburger thing would be his oddball actions of not being social. Um, but uh, there's these other guys who are extraordinarily social and they're still sociopaths, right? It's that thing that's still there. And yeah. So that could be why, but the actions of him are not from some just general person that's autistic, right? One time she brought bought ponies into her front yard for her son's birthday. She went all out to with parties, and then he was kind of off to the side, not really talking to anyone, and definitely saying hi and not ignoring anybody. He would typically disappear for a while, and he was smiling friendly outwardly, right? Um... So she was generally an upbeat person, very sweet, very, you know, really cute, funny, and she would often drop off little gifts. And she dropped off two huge crates of strawberries when my water heater gave out. She insisted that we come to her place to take a shower. I was the only one who took her up on it. I know her parents and they lived here and they were often in the front yard. They actually had two chairs put out and they would sit there and wave. I could not communicate with them because they didn't speak English. See, there's that. But they were very warm, very sweet, very good with kids. So, yeah. Okay, so for them, it's going to be hard to pick up his garbage half the time. Because, it, like I said, the people that I know that have taken advantage of people in that community, it, there's that language barrier. So, it's so much easier when you're speaking the language and know, what the hell did he just say? And why is he going on like that? You know, it's like instead... Uh, the daughter probably interpreted uh, his garbage to them. <laughs> yeah, and then they didn't know half the things that were going on. Like, they could probably see he's a weirdo and not really that great, but they, you know, it's much easier for us to pick that up than it would be uh, as a second language. I don't have a good feeling. I don't think I'm ever going to see those three again, and she would never leave without the kids, and she was an amazing mom, and three boys were attached to her. She did everything for them. Her whole life revolved around the boys. They did all kinds of extracurriculars and were very accomplished boys. She had very high hopes for them. Well, not with the dad like that. I'm going to say that. <laughs> she was an all-around good mom, good person, good daughter to her parents. Okay. 
I have met his parents many times. They are friendly. They are from Mississippi. They would never miss a single birthday. His sister, Mary Ellen, was very involved. Well, you can tell me that his sister didn't notice these things either, right? And then the problems with their father. I mean, that that those are things right there. Um, how they act in public is just a show. Um, but yeah, maybe the sister now will say, yeah, you know, this town has grown up. It might turn into that. I have no idea. Haskell lived with his wife's parents and their three children. Okay. Um, yeah. And then it goes into the dad's past and he's busted and then that's it. Okay. So what is in the comments? Do I want to read them? The neighbor is digging, dig, digging her 15 minutes of fame. That's not right. It's the ones that look kind of like you need to watch. It's it's the ones that look kind of that you need to watch out for. Um, empty life, empty soul. Maybe instead of wooing the celebrities, a parent should have should have par parented more because this guy is a lunatic. Yeah, um, and they may have, and that's you know we're, we'll find out. More weapons, and we need more weapon control. See how that works. <laughs> More weapon violence. Okay, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I go, even if they go for the guns, we just saw a story, right? Ghost gun, right? Hey, they'll get that. Uh, now we have the sword weapon crap, and he's cut, you know, doing this. So there's that. They go for whatever, okay? Sounds like he's a Hollywood guy producing context for television or movies. Yeah, but they're hiding behind that. My perpetrator people, they did that too. Like, everybody's like, oh, you know, this is all, you know, just entertainment. It's like, but you got to really think, why is it entertainment to kill women and abuse them and do all these things? And then in real life, that's what they did. Right? It took a long time to really sit with that stuff because me as a kid, when I used to, I, it was all entertainment to me as a kid. And the form of violence that I was watching, there was a lot of violence on women, but it's so subconscious to me, like I'm not thinking too much of the, you know, how they were writing these, these horror films and things, and who was doing it. And then in reality, it was all those people and their pals there that helped cover up and totally supported the people that abused me. It's disgusting. It, it's it's taken me a long time like i won't watch any of that stuff anymore and i don't have any it, i don't find it entertaining i don't it's such a different thing and just hearing music is really um traumatizing to me really most of the time so um yeah that's how bad that was so thank goodness this liberal madman is off the street yeah oh he's totally liberal someone needs to clean up hollywood what a waste of real world consequences of marrying a MAGA protest. Yeah, see, they're just going. He's a Democrat. Like, they keep going back and forth on this stuff. It's not about politics. So they had a body, yet they still, after a week, have not done DNA on the body. To sit here waiting on results while his wife and in-laws are missing. Unbelievable. I don't know if it's a thing. Okay, so... There was no, I mean, to be graphic here, there was no head found in the bag. There was a couple of descriptions of the bag thing. So they said that it was like put inside of a duffel bag and then put into a hefty bag, which is probably why it wasn't like this giant mess from those like mover guys. Oh my God. So what they were feeling was inside this duffel bag bag like she was in a bag inside of a duffel bag and the duffel bag was inside of a hefty bag or something like that. And then there was no head, so then you have to figure out where's that. But then on the footage, you see him leave for a few minutes. We don't know where he went. That could be a clue that he... I don't know what he did. He could have went to pick up kids, like, just down the street. He could have jumped something off really quick down the street and then came back. Uh, maybe the mover guys called him and they said we're coming back and then he drove back from where he was originally going we don't know but he took off for a few minutes and i was like well if he jumped anything in the few minutes and you know it wasn't that far it was just right by his house um and he probably had a lot to jump because you're talking about three people 
the other thing is about the cars, right? So the cars, um, I don't know how the hell he did the cars. The car thing would have to be where he drove off somewhere, parked the car somewhere, and then came back somehow, and then took another car and dumped it somewhere. Because why would they be gone, right? And how did he get back? You know, uh, all he has to do is get an Uber, right? So he could go anywhere. He can go jump at anywhere in the city and then um, do that. I mean, he did, I don't. He's not very thought out, so I doubt he did anything too elaborate with the cars. They're probably just parked somewhere on a street or in a parking lot, something. You know what I mean? And then someone will go, "Oh God, this car's been there for a long time," and they know nothing about the story, right? I I doubt like the m majority of the public know about the story, so they wouldn't think anything twice about. Oh, they're looking for those two cars. And he is familiar with a lot of the areas out here. So that's why I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if he did that. Because he's he's comfortable and he knows about the areas. And the sons are totally not okay. They're just, they're just not. You can't be coming from a home like that. But I just want to make it clear. Just because you have autism doesn't mean you're a straight up sociopath or would do these kind of conducts. It has to do with his home life and his dad. And the family and the upbringing from that. So... Yeah, that's, um, but yeah, that does explain, like, the oddball behavior. That's what I was saying. I go, God, uh, even in the Brian Koberger case, too, I go, yeah, he might, too, because uh, the oddball, um, the additions to it, when they're, like, really creepy and they're, like, staring at you and they do these weird things, I go, yeah, I think that trait right there is related to that, but not, not the socio part, but the, the trait in the addition, I go, that makes them much more creepy, right? Because uh, the oddball social cues, right? That's that's the only addition. And it could have something to do with uh, learning. So when they're... But it wouldn't be... They wouldn't turn out like this unless the environment itself is bad. Because the environment has to be bad included in that. Even if you had a learning disability, because... He, his dad is um, engaging in conduct towards women and being in a way that was picked up in the environment. Like, that's one portion that we know for sure. Yeah, they need to look at that in the combination, yeah. I was saying they kept abusing those kids. So, most of them, like, when you go into the historical thing... They were totally abused as being seen as lazy and this and that. And then, so, of course, naturally, they came out to be these mega monsters. Um, but if they were in a healthy environment still with those issues, um, it wouldn't be there because you need to have that combination of... Um, that combination of some type of abuse or what they're picking up from that environment portion, that really portion there. No one just runs around and goes, you know, oh, I just want to kill some women. Like, and then try to blame it all on autism. Like, that's just ridiculous. That guy's out here, too, by the way, with that same thing going on. Did he kill anybody? I have no idea. I'm like, I have no idea because they didn't really bust him. And then they allegedly let him work in the school district. And kept a lot of that stuff under wraps because Ellie, uh, Sheriff's Department thought it was hilarious. Um, mm hmm And I'm not the only victim of it either. So I have the emails from my boss, actually, where he said that they, um, were reported on several other people and somebody else actually went to the police as well. It wasn't just me. I didn't even, I, I, for some reason, I didn't even remember that. But yeah, it was a copy of the email that he sent to him as a threat to stay away. And then he ignored the the letters. And then he trailed me to another job. And so this went on for like two years. And then I moved here. And then I saw a new victim online. And I went to go look him up. And I go, oh my god, he's, he's not that far. That's crazy. Because initially... Um, I don't, I don't know where he lived prior, but I, when he met me, it was, well, it was somewhere out here at a get together, a private get together. 
and he was at that location and he's like god you know i've been wanting to meet you for a long time it was like a typical fan dude type of thing and i was like oh that's cool whatever hi you know it was like that and then that's it that was the only interaction i had with that guy i don't know who he is and then he continued on and then i just was like this dude's like weird as hell and then somebody found out it was that guy and they're like oh no no and they gave me this whole rundown about this guy and i was like that's crazy and yeah he tried to get physically violent i guess with somebody else yeah and they told him to stay away and he doesn't he doesn't listen to no no and he had asperger's yes he had that <laughs>